as we welcome back our coast, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two star. Good morning, Rob. Maria said I was not nice to you the first hour, so I'm going to try to be nice to you the second hour. You know, I said nothing of the kind. <laughs> Maria is always on my side, Bill. She Just is. That. That. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Also, Maria Lawrence, an all star. Good morning. Good morning, Maria. See, she smiles at me when she, she looks does. At she, she looks at you. She goes, I said nothing of the kind. <laughs> Good morning, Rob. How are you? <laughs> See the difference, Bill? Yeah, I do see the difference. Uh, my eyes have opened. And you even put, you even We've put been this. friends for too long, Bill. Too long. Actually, not long enough. Let's, let's keep it going. Keep it going, yeah. We're going through a bit of a toilet musical chairs here in the building, <laughs> which we don't normally have to go to because there's not a lot of females around the, the building other and, than Kresha. And generally, there are two toilets, but not now. Yes, not, not now. The women's room is out of order, so there's been a seat up or seat down debate and, going on throughout the morning. And Maria insists that as us men leave, we have to lower the seat. There you go. So there's a lot of coffee drank yeah. by the co-hosts during the program, so every commercial break, it's a We're mad all dash. running in and out. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Might have been some behind-the-scenes information you may have been able to get and, that. And, 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 people and, have and, no and, interest in. No, they sure. do now. But there's humor attached to it. I, I think. <laughs> I guess. That's, that's potty humor right there. Yeah, oh. our, our guest oh. in the segment <laughs> is Dr. Ryan Sachs. He is the superintendent of schools in Berkeley County. Good morning, sir. How are you? It's uh, I'm, I'm doing well. It's great to be here. Great to always. have you. So you you were mentioning that you have a listen and learn session scheduled for tonight. What is that? Yeah. So uh, part of my transition plan um, as superintendent over the first hundred days is to have several listen and learn sessions from uh, throughout the county, and that's just an opportunity for our families, our students, staff members. Um, you know, uh, if if they're in and out and about, uh, to be able to bend my ear and. Tell me some of the great things we do in Berkeley County Schools, but also maybe some areas where they'd like to see some improvement. And so this evening from 5 to 7, I'll be at Hedgesville uh, Middle School uh, for their family uh, family night. And so uh, I look forward to seeing some people and talking and, you know, just learning, again, more about what to, is on the hearts and the minds of the folks that we serve. Now, you said this was the first one of the year, or have you done one already? Uh, this is the first one that, we, that we've done so far this year. We're going to have four, okay. um, and it'll be different, different parts of the county. And did you do these in Huntington? Uh, I did those. I did seven years ago uh, when I first became superintendent. We sort of did a... Um, a I guess a, a caravan around the school district to again learn more about the the school district and what we could do to improve Cabell County Schools at that time. Do you recall if you got any suggestions that you're able to implement? Oh yes. Um, <clears throat> so way back when, um, you know, uh, we um, there were there were gaps in technology, there were gaps in professional development, even some curriculum resources for students, um, and all of those things we were really able to embed into our strategic plan and into. Um, how we prioritize our financial resources to move forward to best meet the needs of the community at the time. Ron, I noticed you titled this Listen and Learn mm -hmm. and not Engage mm -hmm. and Learn. So that implies that you mostly listen mm -hmm. and very little responding. Is that correct? Well, I think, um, you know, if there's problems, if, there, if there's immediate problems that need to be, you know, uh, resolved, then um, I guess it could be engaged, but it would be engaged from let me get the right people to to, to address the situation and to improve it or to fix the situation. Uh, but this is for me an opportunity, again, it is to listen, it's yeah. to listen and to yeah. hear um, what the, um, again, what it is that our stakeholders find valuable uh, that, we've, that we do well, that you know you, we wanna make sure we maintain, but also where there's areas that we can focus for improvement in um, making sure that our curriculum, our, the, the services and support we provide to our students and our families, but also how we support our staff. Um, you know, I, I want to be able to learn, um, again, what, from them what, what they think we need to do. And on a given listen and learn, how many people would be there? Well, we try to focus these opportunities um, around different activities that are going on within our schools so that um, it's uh, an organic opportunity for folks to come up and to talk and to, you know, to, to uh, speak with me. Um, and so making myself available at those events is important. So it really depends. It's usually about, it's usually depending upon the event. Um, in the past, I know that, um, you know, if you don't tie it to something like that, your attendance um, or the opportunity to engage can be less because, you know, it, it, people have to 
travel out of their home and they have to come to the yeah. school or they have to come to wherever the location is. So we try to tie it together with something, with another event. I, I'm using this to build to another question, but give me, you, you've, you've not given me a number yet. Give me an approximate number or range of numbers. Are we talking about five people there? Are we talking about 25 people? Are we talking about 50 people? Well, this is my first one here, so I don't know exactly I know, but how many. You, but you've done it before, have you? Oh, not? yeah. So yeah. when I've done these in the past, um, it could be anywhere from 25 people to – you know, an event where, you know, um, it's a, a play or an activity at the school. So there might be two or 300 people. Okay. So it, that it can range. Yeah. Earlier today, we had a lady from the Cardinal Institute, and she made a point that 50, and that she surveyed 402 uh, people you. in West Virginia. Uh, and they, uh, and the bulk of the folks, 50, over 50% were dissatisfied with the service they were getting from the schools and they broke it down several different ways uh, one was uh, only 29 percent felt they had co they, they had confidence the schools were preparing the students for life after school for the employment about the same number were not preparing the students for uh, to go into college uh, they made a uh, concern that this uh, the parents were not familiar with the the school budget and there's taxpayers dollars uh the point was 50 50 percent of the people surveyed were not satisfied with the schools. now your numbers the numbers that you provided are statistically if you have two or three hundred people they're statistically meaningful as much as this survey was do you get any vibe at all of the unhappiness of the of the families of the parents well actually so you know the listen and learn sessions are not the only way that we're going to yeah. acquire information for us to make decisions on how we're going to move forward as a school district we um I, i'm also implementing uh, what they call it, what we're calling a superintendent's stakeholder survey that survey will go to out to every single family member of Berkeley County students. Uh, it'll go to our, our uh, staff and it will be available for the public uh, to be able to respond to. Um, and it's really to get to the heart of, you know, what is it again? It, it's, it's more of the, it's more direct questions than what the open ended listen and learn sessions are. But these direct questions are again, to flesh out and to identify, um, what do we do well in meeting the needs of our students? What are your perceptions of the curriculum opportunities for students, for career technical education offerings, for advanced placement? Um, how do you feel about the communication between the school and home? Those types of questions. And then, of course, for staff, it's the quality of professional development, the resources that we provide. Um, and that, that survey, again, will go out to the entire community um and our all of our stakeholders when we get that data back we will have a roadmap of the areas the big rocks that we need to focus on to make berkeley county schools the best that it can be and if the data yields similar information um that you know there's uh, an unsatisfied um uh, feeling uh, of our families um or even of our staff for, around certain things then we have a responsibility to address those things we also have a responsibility to be as transparent as we can around how we focus our, our, our public tax school dollars um, to direct that toward what happens in the classroom. You know, from the time that um, I, I was appointed by the board to become the superintendent in Berkeley County, my mantra has been that from the boardroom to the classroom, we're going to be focusing on things that, that provide the best opportunities for our students to learn. We're going to be focused on our students. And I think in order to do that, we also have to make every effort to be as transparent as we can about how we do those things. Now, how, how are we transparent? Well, we, we stream our board meetings. So when there are financial decisions, when there are big contracts or things like that, that directly support the work of our educators or of our school leaders or of what's going on in our classrooms, our board engages in those conversations. Um, they're asking the right questions to make sure that there is transparency in how those expenditures are, are accomplished. And of course, you know, there's uh, we, we're audited every year. We uh, publish those on our website. So um, I, I think that there's always a room for improvement, and we just need to be able to learn from the people that we serve um, how we can get that information to them in the best way possible. Yeah, in that survey. Uh, the, the I think uh, only 26% of parents knew what the budget went for in their school system. 
that's not the school system's fault. That's the parents' fault. You know, spend a little bit of time, make an effort to find out how the school budget works. Attend but a you board also meeting have to make while. it easy for people. And mm-hmm. Dr. Sachs is saying that it's very transparent. So can I go on Berkeley County Schools website and there's a drop down that says budget and I hit that budget button, which is what Tiffany was sort of um, uh, proposing. Mm-hmm. And I can see what goes where, what salaries people are being um, paid. Is that is that easily accessible? I don't know. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I'm not 100 uh, percent familiar with our own school district's website on the financial side. I will say that what I am accustomed to in in my previous district is all of our financial statements annually are, are published. I do believe that those would be on our Berkeley County School website. Website. If it's not, that's something we need to work toward. But what I will say is, is the West Virginia Department of Education and the state treasurer have the reports that go granular to the school district level for Berkeley County mm-hmm. Schools. You can see salaries. You can see all of those things. So, the state of West Virginia, you know, n- not in order to not duplicate, you know, the state of West Virginia has those resources available for families, um, and I do think it's incumbent upon us to make sure that those things are available uh, and that they're easy to find. Um, but, you know, to your point, there is a responsibility to be able to go out and seek it, and just because it may not be you know, uh, smattered on social media or something like that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And we do try to put it in a a, a, a location that's easy to find, like, you know, on our website and so on and so forth. And if it is smattered on social media, don't believe what you read. That's right. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Stay away. Yeah. Uh, Ron, the, you used the word transparency several times. Uh, I have trouble with that, the definition of that word. Mm-hmm. That's something that every politician uses the running for office everybody says we're going to invoke transparency and a certain level they do but when it becomes a little tricky then they hide behind all sorts of trees and bushes and regulations that we cannot show we cannot be transparent because it's going to infringe upon a person's rights or school systems or the operation uh i don't know if i have a question other than I'm sure you're well aware of the difficulty the word transparency imposes under certain circumstances. Sure. How do you work around that that problem of what should be readily available and what's not readily available? A couple so years or so ago, we had a, uh, uh, a teacher and teacher's aide that were they were subsequently charged, but it went for weeks before the school board would let any information out, and it really put a bad taste in the the residents' mouths because they felt they were being misled. So it comes back to this magic word transparency that everybody uses, but they don't. But they use at different levels. Well. <clears throat> when I was talking about transparency, I was talking about financial transparency. <laughs> but it, but and it, is, I, it is on the website, by the way. Just yeah, sorry okay, to interrupt. Okay, yeah. Damon says but, it's right there. You yeah. just drop down. Yeah. But to answer your question, because, because there are you're, – you're correct. There are certain things that that we can have an abundance of transparency with as it relates to finance, to how money is being spent. And we should be um, – you know, when someone asks us in the public, hey, I want to know about this, we should be able to be able to respond to them on that. As it relates to personnel law, there are certain things that uh, we cannot disclose legally um, as it relates to uh, the ongoing investigation, employee due rights, the due rights of students um, and families, th- those types of things. And so um, there, there is regulation and there are policies and there's federal code and those sort of things that we do have to comply with. I do think, though, that when you have a situation like that being able to communicate as much of what you can communicate as possible is important and reassuring um, the people that you serve that it is being taken seriously that uh, we are following the process and procedures which are required from a legal standpoint without imposing any level of guilt or 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 um decision that has you know been been prematurely made by violating someone's rights that's the other thing that has to be very careful so i have a philosophy that i want to be able to share as much as i can when i can and at the same time if i can't share it at a certain time 
when the time becomes appropriate, I want to be able to do that and be able to answer questions as much as I can as well. And to Bill's point, we also spent lots of weeks on this show um, talking about the breach that happened, um, basically not talking about it. I mean, we would bring, and, and again, understanding that there are certain things that that you can't really talk about, but in the scheme of things, that's what people really want to know about. Mm. You know, how how is this affecting me as an employee? How is it affecting um, my my children as students? All that kind of stuff. And and again, that was before Dr. Sachs's time, so um, maybe it would be different now. But I think people became very frustrated in those situations. Mm. Um, with we just can't comment. Well, uh, were you uh, affected by a breach at all during your time at Huntington? When you say a breach, are you talking Campbell about the technology? You talking about the, the technology? There was a, a, a hack. Yeah, mm -hmm. we were not. No. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I will say though is is that from you know while I was superintendent Cabell, we were well aware of the hack uh, in Berkeley County, and um, I think a lot of the state learned from uh, the issue that occurred here. Um, as to how we could, um, I think, strengthen our preparedness um, and some of our, our walls, if you will, to ensure that those things don't happen. Um, and, it, and now, you know, Berkeley County is leading the, leading the state in, in preparedness and uh, prevention in that, in that regard. Yeah, when you get in fairness to the folks in the school system, because I remember many of those interviews, it was frustrating oh, for all of us, the parents. Yeah. You have attorneys. You, I think the FBI was involved in that. Uh, in well, people are asking for millions of dollars, so I get it. But mm -hmm. from a public standpoint, here's what the appearance is, and then perception becomes reality. But I, and, I totally. And it's understand. all over social media. Yeah. So which uh, you believe every word. Exactly of. right. Yeah. So there so. was there's very little. But the, the board members were in a yeah. difficult situation. They were they absolutely. Were, they were. And yeah. they and they even Ron Stevens, the superintendent at the time, right, they were all in difficult situations because they're being basically ordered. You can't say this. You can't say that. There's not so. Here's the statement that you're right. allowed to say and well, stay and, away from that, and, or we got problems. And when you have when you have legal counsel, yeah. we have you know you have legal counsel. You gotta for listen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. And you have to listen. So, that's, so you're in a tough you're in a tough spot there. What are you supposed to do, right? You get people, parents want to know information, but you can't share it. Media wants to know information, but your lawyers are telling you don't say anything more than this. The FBI is telling you stuff. I mean, you, yeah. it's, it's different. But I will also say, and I'll also say, you know, at that time, um, you know, Berkeley County was not the only school district across the country that was being affected by this. Sure. It was hospital systems, other oh. school systems. I mean. California themselves had several huge, huge, you know, um, hacks uh, with ransoms and those sort of things. And so, um, I, I think we're, I think we're stronger because of it. I also think that that um, that while there was probably some frustration, um, anytime you have a situation like that that you can't talk, that um, that our board again was was following the guidance of legal counsel and as they should do. So, have you now being on the job about what four months? Yes, sir. Yep. Right. Have you satisfactorily had an opportunity to review most, if not all, the systems right now in Berkeley County Education to determine where efficiencies can be improved and where you're pretty happy where we're up to speed? Uh, I would say that I have a lot of, um, you know, the day-to-day -day workings, you know, you, you become very quickly accustomed to the processes and the procedures. Every now and then there'll be one thing that, you know, pops up and you're like, oh, well, that's interesting, <laughs> you know. But um, f for the most part, you know, here's what I'll tell you that I, I have learned is that we have great people. Mm -hmm. We have excellent, excellent educators that are working tireless, tirelessly every single day to make sure that the students of Berkeley County are educated um, and that are provided the best opportunities to learn. We have amazing support staff, service personnel, aides, custodians, bus drivers, cooks, uh, secretaries. I mean, they, they uh, maintenance staff. I mean, they are just phenomenal. And so when, when you have good people, the processes that you identify that may hinder productivity or efficiency or effectiveness because it's been something that has been implemented at one time was effective, but that because of change and, and so on and so forth, maybe less, um, you know, that, that, that different perspective to make those changes, I think, has to happen with input from those, in, those good people. And so that's the stage we're at now, is, is that we're identifying some areas where, hey, we may have a problem, 
So let's involve the people that have been boots on the ground, our teachers, our educators, our service personnel, to help find solutions and to have ownership in the way that we move forward united as a school district. And um, I can tell you that there's not a day that goes by that I don't see something that just truly impresses me about what it is that we do for our students and our families. Um, and there, while, while I, 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 I think it's important to note that there are still things that we need to do to improve, and there are practices that we probably need to imp implement to make it better for student achievement, to, uh, for student learning outcomes, and we have a long way to go there. But it's about having the right people in the right places. It's about making sure that we have the right resources in place for our, our faculty and our staff so that they can they can have the resources they need to provide a world-class education every single day. And I think I think there are plenty of opportunities for parents and community members. Like I was, I mentioned earlier, um, I was at Orchard View um, on Monday delivering dictionaries as part of our Rotary project. And I couldn't have been more welcomed by the teacher. The students were very well behaved, attentive, eager, so excited to get a dictionary that they get to take home. Um, so I think there are opportunities like that between that and read aloud and pass. I mean, mm -hmm. folks can get into the schools. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be just a homeroom mom or dad or whatever, or even be involved in you know, PTA, PTOs, there are plenty of opportunities to get right. in there and see on a firsthand basis what it's like. You're exactly right. You know, I hate to go back to that, that topic we talked about with satisfaction. I think what that research would also yield, uh, and I think what we will even yield from our, our stakeholder survey is, is that families are usually very satisfied with their school. It's the broader school system that they have frustrations over. They're usually very, very satisfied with what, what goes on in their school, within their classrooms. And I think that speaks volumes about, about our, our individual schools. So improving some of those relationships at the district level and you know, I think is important. We hear the same thing with our legislators. We're happy with our legislators. Don't like the other legislators. Uh, that's an interesting point with the schools. Are the uh, statistics to back those studies to back that up, Ron? Um, I, I could not cite them, but I know that the research out there exists, mm -hmm. and I think that um, as we flesh out the data from the stakeholder survey that will soon be available for people, I think that the data will yield that as well. Wasn't that one of the Cardinal Institute pieces that? Um, about people, how they felt about their own schools yeah. or their own kids in their own schools um, was a higher percentage or was then not great. Then the overall system yeah. uh, mm -hmm. may have been. Okay. Yeah, I'm not about sure a minute left. Do you have any uh, superintendent shout outs you want to do here today, Dr. Sachs? Um, well, I want to give a shout out to all of our food service staff and our cooks across the school district. This past week, we celebrated uh, National School Lunch Week. And um, it was find your treasure uh, with school lunches. And so um, our, I was able to um, work with our fantastic cooks at Martinsburg High School and um, over at Berkeley, um, uh, at Burke Street. And I was just so impressed with the, 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 the love that they have for providing for our students and the and the awesome meals that they were providing as well so i had an opportunity to actually dress up as a pirate on friday nice <laughs> and i uh, got to give the big r to our kiddos and they it was just it was wonderful so a big shout out to our food service staff for doing what they do every single day for our students across berkeley county schools did you go with the earring oh i had an earring and what I, about i just didn't have a peg leg so no. we're good how about halloween what that. are you going to dress as for halloween well i'd probably be a pirate <laughs> <laughs> i got the costume, got the costume. ready to go <laughs> well that's awesome well, have a great day. I appreciate you coming in today, as always. As always. Thank you. All right, Dr. Ryan Sachs, we are back with more right after we do these.